On this January morning in 1364, more than 60 days after, quote, Blessed Urban V believed God was punishing Christians by afflicting them with the Black Death, we find ourselves in the midst of a historic moment on health care. From Cordova to Russia, from the church to the state, the emergence of new and bold proposals from across the spectrum have effectively ended the debate over whether or not we should have a universal health care structure in the 12th century Europe. In the 1360s, a campaign for an affordable universal health care plan for every single European must not be a question of whether, it must be a question of how. We have the ideas, we have the resources, and we must find the will to pass a plan by the end of the next king's reign. I know there's skepticism out there about whether this can happen, and there's reason for it. In every king's reign, there are health care plans offered up in campaigns with great fanfare and promise. But once, but once the king's reign ends, the plans collapse under the weight of European politics, leaving the rest of Europe to destroy with the extreme cost. For too long, this debate has been stunned by what I call the smallness of our politics. The idea that there isn't much we can agree on or do about the major challenges facing the kingdom. And when something bold is proposed, the feudalists and the partisans treat it like a jousting tournament. With each side keeping score of who's up and who's down, using fear and misunderstanding and other cheap tricks to win their argument. Even if we lose our solution in the process. Well, we can't afford another disappointing charade in 1365. It's not only tiresome, it's wrong. It is wrong when the goldsmiths have to lay off one of its employees because they can't find the health care of its own workers. It is wrong when a, when a parent cannot take a sick child to the doctor because they cannot afford to pay for it. It is wrong when no Europeans have health care at all. In a country that spends more, more on health care than any other nation on earth, it's just wrong. And yet, in recent years, we caught the attention of those who haven't always been in favor to, of reform. Is this realization that this crisis isn't just morally offensive, it's economically untenable? For years, the can't-do crowd has scared the European people into believing that universal health care would mean socialized medicine and burdensome taxes. That we would just stay out of the way and tinker at the margins. You know the statistics. Family premiums are up by nearly 87% over the last five years, growing five times faster than workers' wages. Physicians' costs for care and healing remedies are through the roof. Nearly 1,100 Europeans who already have health care plans have spent more than a quarter of their salary on the plan in the last year. And over half of the people in debtors' prisons today were sent there because of overdue medical bills. But they say it's too costly to act. Almost half of all small businesses no longer offer health care to their, to their workers, and so many others have responded to rising costs by laying off workers or shutting their doors for good. We are watching four competitors' universal health care run circles around them. But they say it's too risky to act. They tell us it's too expensive to, to, to cover the uninsured, but they don't mention that every time a European without health insurance walks into a barbershop, a bloodletting session. Our family's premiums are 922% higher because of the cost of care for the uninsured. We pay 15 billion more denarius in taxes because of the cost of care for the uninsured. And, it's trapped in a, and it has trapped us in a vicious cycle. As the uninsured cause premiums to rise, more employers drop coverage. As more employers drop coverage, more people become uninsured and premiums rise even further. But the skeptics tell us that reform is too costly, too risky, too impossible for Europe. Well, the skeptics must be living somewhere else, because when you see what the health care crisis is doing to our families, <coughs> to our economy, to our country, you realize that caution is what's costly. Inaction is what's risky. Doing nothing is what's impossible when it comes to health care in Europe. It's time to act. This isn't a problem of money. This is a problem of will. A failure of leadership. We already spent 2.2 trillion denarius a year on health care in this country. My colleague, foodless Ron Hellspring, who's recently developed a bold new health care plan of his own, tells it this way. For the money Europeans spent on health care last year, we could have hired a group of skilled physicians. 
take each one of them 200,000 denarius to care for just seven families and guarantee every single European quality affordable health care. Where's all that money going? We know that a quarter of it, one out of four, one out of every four health care denarius is spent on non-medical costs, mostly bills and paperwork. At the Crusaders administration, it costs nine denarius to pull a medical record. But because we have an updated technology in the rest of the healthcare industry, a single transaction still costs up to 25 denarius, not one pence of what's going toward improving the quality of our healthcare. We should make sure that every single child who's eligible is signed up for the Children's Health Insurance Program and that the papal government should make sure that their ter territories have the money to make that happen. And we have to start looking at some of, in some of the interesting ideas on comprehensive reform that are coming out of countries like England, Germany to France to see what we can replicate on a national scale and what will move us toward the goal of universal coverage for all. But regardless of what combination of policies and proposals get us to this goal, we must reach it. We must act and we must act boldly. As one healthcare advocate recently said, the most expensive course is to do nothing. But it wasn't a liberal nobleman or guild leader who said this. It was the papal position of the current health industry association that funded the Burn the Witch campaign designed to kill the heathen health care plan of the early 20th, 20th, 1290s. The debate in this country over health care has shifted. The support for comprehensive reform that individuals like I and China have worked so hard to build is now widespread and the diverse group of health industry interests that are part of your current health care coverage is testament to that success. And so Rome is no longer and so Rome is no longer has an excuse for cost. Leaders no longer have a reason to be timid and Europe can no longer afford an action. That's not who we are, and that's not the story of our nation's improbable progress. Half a century ago, Europe found itself in the midst of another health care crisis. For millions of elderly Europeans, the single greatest cause of poverty and hardship was the crippling cost of health care and the black debt. Two out of every three elderly Europeans had annual income of less than 1,000 denarius, and only one in eight had health insurance. As health care and hospital costs continued to rise, more and more private insurers simply refused to in insure our, el our elderly, believing they were too great of a risk to take, to take care of them. The resistance to action was fierce. Proponents of health care reform were opposed by well-financed, well-connected interest groups who spared no expense in telling the European people that these efforts were dangerous and demonic from the devil and even deadly. And yet the reformers marched on. They testified before Rome and they took their case to the country and they were introduced dozens of different proposals, but always, always they stood firm to their goal to provide health care for every European. And finally, after years of ad advocacy, being burned at the stake, negotiation and plenty of setbacks, Pope Blessed Urban IV signed the Medicare bill into law on July 30th of 1962. The signing ceremony was held in Rome with the first man who was bold enough to, in to issue the call for universal health care, myself, at Wien Weimar. And as Ivan Sina stood by my side and watched the signing of what would become the most successful government program in history, a program that had seemed impossible for so long, Pope Blessed Urban looked out to the crowd and said, history shapes men, but it is necessary faith of leadership that men can help shape history. Never forget that we have Never forget that we have it within our power to shape history in this country. It is not in our character to sit idly by as victims of fate or circumstance, for we are a people of action and innovation, forever pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Now is the time to push these boundaries once more. We have come so far in the debate on health care in this country, but now we must finally answer the call first issued by yours truly, Edwin Weimark, advanced by Ivan Sina and found for by so many leader, leaders and Europeans throughout the last century. The time has come for total universal health care in Europe, and I look forward to, help, to working with all of you to meet this challenge in the weeks and months to come. Thank you, my people.